back to Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. Today, we're gonna to be reviewing the Savage Axis II Precision. In this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Savage Axis II Precision. Now, this is a fantastic barreled, ax barreled action chassis combo that you may want to get if you're getting into PRS type competitions and you don't have, well, let's say $2,000 to spend on, well, your rifle. Now, if you're looking to pick this up, you're gonna be, you should expect to pay around $850 US, or if you're in Canada, about $1,050 to about $1,200 Canadian. Um, if you're looking for where to buy them, check out the links in the descriptions below. I'll leave that out for you. Um, now, what you need to know about this barreled action chassis combo. Um, the Savage Axis II Precision is a budget barreled action, which is very, very popular. And it's at Savage's Axis, most low end, for their uh, barreled actions. Now, regardless of how budget it is, Savage always provides really, really good accuracy when it comes to any of their rifles. So pretty much every rifle that I've had from Savage, if they ever had an issue, it was never accuracy. So, and as far as chassis go, this is where Savage teamed up with MDT, Modular Driven Technologies. We did a review on their Savage, uh, sorry, on their MDT Oryx chassis. Um, they make, fantastic chassis. They make some for the more affordable side, so the Oryx chassis or the XRS, all the way to their ESS, LSS, and I forget the other ones, but they're, they're pretty darn expensive and they retail for about a thousand bucks. So um, at their lowest end is about 500, all the way to about a thousand. Now this Savage Axis and 6.5 Creedmoor comes with a 22 inch barrel, so long enough to get some good velocity. It comes threaded for either suppressor or a muzzle brake. This, this rifle chassis has all the features. You have a 20 MOA rail, you have an adjustable comb height, adjustable length of pull. Um, it, takes, it takes AR-15 type uh, pistol grips, but I mean, you probably won't really want to change it. This one is actually pretty good. Uh, it takes AICS magazines and it has M-lock rails on the sides and on the bottom. So. There are a lot of things that, well, there's pretty much everything you're gonna need here for let's say getting into PRS or long range shooting. Now let's start with the, probably the most important part of any rifle review is accuracy. Let's get to the range and check that out. Another thing I noticed, which you probably just noticed, is that unless you give it a good pull, the ejectors don't always throw the casing out. So that's just something that you're gonna have to, well, think about. By the looks of things, so we got a damn nice group going on there. Damn nice. Let's see if we can make it one shot better. Ah, made it a little bigger. <laughs> now for accuracy, in the beginning when I originally bought this rifle, the first about 80 rounds through it weren't so good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna admit that right at the beginning. I'd have two rounds touching and I'm like, oh, that's a great group. And now let's put a third one and four inches high and about two inches left. What is going on? I, well, I should have obviously known. I kind of figured it was the barrel breaking itself in. And well, that's exactly what it was. After about the first 80 rounds, uh, this rifle, the groups just snugged right up and I was doing sub MOA. It was beautiful. I mean, as you guys could see, uh, this rifle can give pretty good group groups. So now let's use this rifle for what it was designed for. Let's go do some long range shooting. All right, hit the target. Now we are a little bit overcompensating. <laughs> ok, 
Okay, that's awesome. We're at 330 meters. Let's move it a little bit further. <laughs> Looks like we're bang on. That's what happens when you get the right ballistics in your Kestrel. <laughs> Beautiful. I love it. I love this gun. You know, when a rifle works great right from the beginning, or pretty much, you know, it really gives you that confidence in the rifle. Whereas, you know, I haven't always had that experience with more budget actions. <laughs> Hit her again. Oh, I straightened it out too. <laughs> love it. Let's hit it one more time and we're gonna try it a little bit further. You know, I don't know. Oh, well, yeah, that's what happens. All right, so we're at 590 meters. We're gonna recheck our wind. Ooh, it's picked up, ladies and gentlemen. 1.4 mils right. <laughs> okay, let's see if that gets us where we need to be. Uh, how many mils up? Uh, five point, uh, five and a quarter, something like that. I know, 5.1, okay, okay. Oh, we hit it all right. Actually, we hit that guy pretty high. Yeah, we're hitting high and right. So I'm gonna go a little bit, I'm gonna go a little bit left. And a quarter mil down. Let's see if we get her here. Ha ha ha! Yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. I I'm really, really loving this gun. Oh, yeah. Damn it, I love this. <laughs> you know, long range shooting is, is probably my favorite hobby. I mean, I do motocross as well, but nothing beats, you know, hitting a plate from, you know, half a kilometer away. Well, a little bit more. This is beautiful. This, if this isn't the best sport in the world, I don't know what is. Let's see if we can hit it a little bit further. I wanna see if I can push myself more than I've usually done. All right, so we're at 650 meters. This is pretty much as good as we can get because there's farmers out in the fields, as you can see. Uh, let's see if we can nail this guy again. So my Kestrel is telling me I gotta adjust for 6.7 uh, mils up. Let's do what we're told. 6.7? No, sorry, 6.07. So, let's do it. Oh, and the wind. Can't forget about the wind or else we will just completely fail. So I'm gonna hold about a whole mil which we're already at. Now, let's get her done. I heard it, I heard a hit. I'm pretty sure I heard a, a thunk. I'm pretty sure I heard it. Okay, I don't know if I heard it that time. That sounded like a hit, but you know what? I, I couldn't see it move. Ah, no, that was.
was a hit. I, I could see it move a little bit that time. <laughs> oh, this is so much fun. Now, that was a heck of a lot of fun. Um, this rifle is a blast. The trigger on this thing is pretty nice. This rifle is accurate. We were shooting up to 650 meters, and uh, this rifle with the right scope, I mean, it can perform. In this video, we were using the US Optics TS-20X. Now, if you're looking to get into long range shooting, you're gonna need a good scope too. In this video, we're using the uh, US Optics, the TS-20X. This is a bit more on their affordable line. I mean, they typically make like $3,500 scopes, which is like, whoa, <laughs> that's nuts. Um, but this here is a bit more affordable. It's about 1,300 bucks US. Um, and I mean, it pretty much has everything. It's got a zero stop, tons of internal adjustment, um, long eye relief, uh, it's got good glass, positive turrets, and a 34 millimeter tube. Uh, anyway, so that's what we were using for this because I wanted to make sure, you know, we have a really good quality optic on this rifle to make sure that that's not gonna be the problem, okay? So for accuracy, I'm definitely gonna give this rifle a five out of five. If anybody says anything about Savage, uh, they typically will never say accuracy was an issue. Um, Savage is, is really well known for making some really accurate barrels, regardless of the price point. So you may have the most basic barrel of action. Well, I mean, this one is their most affordable one, the Savage Axis II, uh, and it's super accurate. I mean, I don't know what more you could want for. I mean, this barrel of action, if you, Consider buying the barrel dash in the cheapy stock alone is about 500 bucks Canadian or about 380 bucks US. This is a really uh, budget barrel action and I mean it performs. So the next part is obviously well the barrel action. We did have some issues when it came to ejection. We didn't have issues when it came to extraction or feeding. It was really only when it came to ejection, which I looked in the forums online and it looks like I'm pretty much the only one with that issue. So I mean, yeah, that's not great, but it's easily fixable. And Savage is gonna help me out on that. I did find when I gave it a good pull, it would just throw the casing out. Whereas if I was just being casual like that, it would kind of like, nope, not falling all the way out. <laughs> but so far, like I said, it looks like I'm the only one with that issue. Uh, other than that, I mean, the bolt on this barrel action, in my opinion, when it comes to like tactical shooting, long range shooting, PRS, I would prefer their longer bolt knobs. Like they have, I think on the Savage, um, is it the 110 Tactical? I think it's the 110 Tactical, it's the 10 Tactical, one of the two. Anyway, they have a much bigger bolt knob and it's a bit better to flip around as opposed to this. So yeah, in my opinion, they could have put a better bolt knob, but remember, I mean, this is their most budget barreled action. You can't really expect much more, but I mean, you can buy that in aftermarket support. On this barreled action, they did throw a 20 MOA rail, which is great. I mean, I have the Savage B22 Precision, which is the same concept. You put a uh, budget barreled action into a fantastic chassis and there you go. Uh, but it didn't come with a 20 mm rail. This one did, I was really happy with that. I mean, you can really take advantage of a lot of the internal adjustment in most scopes. Now, if you do need more internal adjustment, you can always buy a 20 or you can always buy like a 30 or a 40 mm rail. There's plenty of support when it comes to rails. Other than that, um, the action itself isn't very smooth. I'm myself, I'm more used to Tikas. I have three Tika T3Xs and they are much smoother than this. This, in the beginning, it was actually a lot more gritty and it smoothened itself out significantly, but it's it's not a Tika, but it's about a third to half the price. But regardless of how it feels, it still performs really, really well. So for the barreled action, we are gonna give it a four out of five for the reason of the ejection issues. Next, we have the trigger. Now, Savage advertises this trigger to be able to do to be able to go down as low as 2.5 and as high as six. Now, in my experience, well, I didn't have that experience. Uh, I got as low as 3.1 very consistently out of eight time out of ten times we had eight that were um, three, that were three and an eighth to about uh, the highest they advertised six. We were getting five and an eighth, and very very consistently. Other than that, the trigger pull is. Uh, it has some creep to it, so check this out. You can see that creep probably in the video. Okay, so there is some creep to it, but it breaks at the same weight pretty much every time. So for the price, you're just not gonna get better. This is still pretty darn good. So for the trigger, we are gonna give it a four out of five. 
Next, we have the aftermarket support. So there is plenty, plenty, plenty aftermarket support when it comes to the Savage Axis 2. Um, likely you won't need any of it because I mean, this is like it's best evolution. You won't need anything more than this. You have an adjustable cheek riser, adjustable length of pull. Uh, yeah, you can change the grip if you really need to. It's got everything. There's really nothing more you're gonna need to do other than maybe you might wanna put a muzzle brake or a suppressor. It's really gonna be up to you at that point. Uh, but there's tons of things you can do with this. So there's plenty of aftermarket support. We're gonna give this a five out of five. Next, there is free floated. In this scenario, yes, this barreled action in this chassis is 100% free floated all the way to the action. So yes, it is free floated. Next, we have the stock. Now, when it comes to chassis, uh, they typically range anywhere between like $700 to about 1000 Now, if you're in the US, that might vary a little bit, but um, that's pretty much where you're ranging. Now, for $850, you're getting a rifle already in a fantastic chassis. That's just amazing. When you consider this barreled action, it's typically about $380 bucks US or about $500 Canadian. And this chassis is normally somewhere around, well, six, seven hundred dollars so something around that and also you can't just buy this chassis out, out, out of out of like MDT this one's made by MDT uh, it's cost it's only provided in this configuration it'll come with this you can't just buy it separately uh, also the um, butt is it does not move up and down it literally can only adjust from for the length of pull and that's it that's all for the stock at this price you're definitely getting a lot for what you pay for we're gonna leave it a five out of five Next, we have the out-of-box readiness. Now, it is 100% ready out-of-box. It is not perfect. You'll need to get your barrel broken in, so just don't jump into your PRS match, throw your optic on, and think you're ready to go. Not quite. You still want to break in that barrel. But other than that, you're, you're, you're ready to go. You know, just adjust your, cheek, your, your comb height for yourself, your length of pull for yourself, and uh, get yourself a decent bipod, I mean, in your set. Uh, actually, another thing I did forget to mention is the magazine. So it comes with these polymer magazines. So for some reason, um, as you can see here, I just pulled one out, out of the, the magazine and uh, there's a little bit of a malfunction with there. Typically, I prefer the Accuracy International Steel magazines from MDT. Um, I like never have any issues with these and they feed really, really well. So if you're considering, okay, I'm gonna go into a PRS type competition, you might wanna sort out your mags first. So yeah. Anyway, typically, uh, a lot of the times I'd say about maybe even a third of the time, I'd say about a third of the times I'll have like three rounds that are stuck here and none of them that really want to come up. It looks like the, the plate here is kind of just like kinked sometimes. Lastly, we have the warranty. Now, Savage only offers a one year limited warranty, which I mean, they're going to cover everything that's like defectiveness of workmanship. They're, they're going to cover you for that. Don't worry about that. They got you covered. Um, but a year isn't all that much, but Savage is actually well known for going above and beyond their one year warranty, which is really great. Um, it's really cool that a company will provide more than what they list instead of trying to barely cover what they, what they list in their warranty. So, I mean, that's really, really great of Savage to do that. And, uh, I mean, as much as we always want lifetime warranties, I mean, machinery wears out. I mean, it's, it, it's cars wear out. Uh, so will a rifle if you put enough rounds through it. So it's kind of normal that they're not going to give you a lifetime warranty. So uh, for the warranty, we are going to give it a three out of five. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, um, consider hitting like, consider hitting subscribe. Uh, if you are looking to pick one of these up, check out the links in the descriptions below. I will leave a lot of links for you to, well, I'll probably leave the ones that I can find with the best price. Uh, so check those out. Also, this rifle does come chambered in 243 Winchester, 223, 270 in 30 6 and well obviously this like this one in 6.5 Creedmoor. So uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, consider hitting like, consider hitting subscribe, and I'll see you on the next review. And thanks for watching Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews.